you're just going to leave it, the change, leave it like it is for now? Well, we've, uh, uh, even though we have a, had a loss of three positions, we'll probably end up hiring an officer this year because of uh, more than three retirements. And uh, one officer just went to work in Minnesota. We're actually going to have four uh, positions open up this year. Uh, but again, three of those are covered by the uh, loss through attrition. Mm -hmm. But next year, we're going to establish, we will establish a new list of candidates because our list this year, I think, will expire toward the end of the year. Uh, so we'll be recruiting again probably early next year. What uh, those those uh, stats that we we're talking about for are they for Waterloo only? Yes, yes. I, the, earlier, Lou and I were talking about some statistics mm -hmm. and a lot of the success we've seen in the past four years. And uh, I like to track trends and and track numbers uh, because that helps me determine if we're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And recently, we were approached by the state, and the state said to us, listen, we, uh, we've we noticed what's happening in Waterloo, but uh, can we get some more information? Is this, I mean, uh, these numbers are just remarkable. Can you give us an explanation as to why you think this is happening? And I gave an explanation. A lot of it does with uh, the hard work of a lot of people, not just the police department, uh, but the entire community. There's a lot of optimism in the community. There are still bad things happening, but bad things are happening less frequently. So we like to look at the numbers. So we compared uh, some of our, all of our 2009 numbers to 2013 numbers. Uh, I like to look at trends, and uh, we looked at numbers as they relate to juveniles, mostly as they relate to juveniles for the information we provided to the state. Okay. Uh, juvenile arrest is a great example. Juvenile arrests from 2009 to 2013 are down 49 percent. That's remarkable. It is. Uh, there's a lot, there are a lot of crimes that are associated with juvenile behavior, such as shoplifting, vandalism, disorderly conduct, curfew violations. Uh, in Waterloo, just Waterloo alone, shoplifting is down 27% in four years. Vandalism is down 50% in four years. Disorderly conduct down 66%. Curfew violations down 55%. That doesn't mean the officers are doing less enforcement. It just, it means, you know, as a matter of fact, the officers are working harder. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's fewer of these incidents occurring. Uh, it even spills over to runaways and uh, suicides and attempted suicides. Uh, suicide is the third leading cause of death for people 10 to 24 years old, sadly. How sad, yeah. And, and with our suicides and attempted suicides from 2009 to 2013, they're down 33%. Wow, that's uh, runaways down 27%. The use of force by police officers since 2009 is down 23 uh, percent. When you look at all of these in their totality, I mean, it's encouraging, uh, it's optimistic. We've got some good things going on here in Waterloo. Is there a lot more to do? Yes, there is. But we're going in the right direction. I like to say we're a community that's uh, done well at identifying our assets and nurturing those assets to continue to grow. Uh, I coined a term that I call the Joseph Holmes Triad, and I'm sorry if you're related to Joseph Holmes, but Joseph Holmes is in prison, that's where Joseph Holmes belongs. Uh, Joseph Holmes spent most of his life in prison, in institutions. Uh, he could have been changed. Somebody, you know, I feel maybe as a child, somebody could have done uh, something different in his young, impressionable life to make a difference in it, and he wouldn't be where he is. But when he's about 50 years old, he gets out of prison, uh, uh, breaks into two houses in Waterloo, two occupied houses, terrorizes both people that are in the houses. One is an elderly woman, one's a disabled man. He viciously beats the, the uh, disabled man and he robs him. Uh, so the Joseph Holmes triad is a convicted felon who continues to engage in criminal behavior and uses violence or weapons while doing it. Those three things. Mm -hmm. uh, one aspect, one thing that a police department needs to do is hold those people accountable. And we need to, you know, Joseph Holmes uh, went back to prison. That's where he belongs. Mm -hmm. However, there are members of our community that, sadly, they have made their mistakes. They were convicted of felonies. They've come back to our community, and they're trying to make a difference. The police department needs to support them, work with them, encourage them, uh, so that they continue to be successful, and they make a difference in this community. And we've got a lot of people, even, I may disagree with some of these people on, on their philosophy or some of their points, but I support them and I encourage them because they are helping us make a difference in this community and the results are, are, are these numbers that we're seeing. 
Uh, the school district's working so hard. The court systems are doing a fantastic job with uh, juvenile arrest and juvenile uh, detentions. Because uh, sometimes you're walking a you're walking a tight rope. You, you can't please everybody, mm -hmm. but you're oh, walking a tight oh, rope to try to make the community better. And sometimes you just have to be de de decisive, make a decision, stick with it, and move forward. The theme we have at the police department right now is is it's the theme making it stick. Our vision okay. is to make Waterloo safer. Uh, but we've been, uh, the community's been so successful in making things better. We want to tweak it a little bit more, uh, see more better, you know, good things happen, but then we've got to make it stick. Uh, it's sad what we're seeing in Cedar Rapids right now. Cedar Rapids is, they've already had seven homicides this year. Uh, they've already had 30 shootings this year. That's remarkable for Cedar Rapids. Yeah. You know, the one concern I have is are we doing such a good job here in Waterloo? Are we deflecting some of our problems to Cedar Rapids? And I've, you know, I've communicated with the chief. He and I are good friends, as a, as a matter of fact. Uh, but, uh, you know, so, so there's, I hope we're not doing that. But I, I, I certainly, we, we'd like to figure that out as well. Well, you know, there's a couple of things I always keep an eye out for anything that uh, concerns children. Yeah. And yeah. how they might be affected. And who's going to be the protector for these kids in one way or another. The, uh, uh, what comes to my mind is the, new drinks that are out where Zoe could go and buy it. Right. Um, the energy drinks. Right. Um, parents, sometimes they see that energy, oh, that's good. You know, right. That's probably good. That's healthy. And they that's think. healthy. They and, they, and, they, and they let the kids have it because they, they haven't done any research on it. They don't know what's in the product mm -hmm. or whatever. But it's something else your kid wants, you know. Right. And if we are not very careful, we could wind up with going the other way, like you're saying, yeah. in some of these categories. So um, I don't know. I think they're already, the legislature, people in the legislature are aware of this and are already um, trying to do something about about this situation. But um, I, when they first came out, I thought, this is exactly what's going to happen. Nobody's going to pay attention because it's, you know, the ingredients are there and it sounds mm -hmm. okay. and. None of us are nutritionists, probably, or, or whatever. Uh, but it is a great concern, and I don't think at this point, what could the police do about it? You know, and we have to deal so much with what, what, is the, what are the rules in black and white? Exactly. What does the law say? And the Iowa legislature, they're almost entertaining to watch. I mean, I don't want to diss them or anything, mm -hmm. but uh, they're, they're a slow-moving organization, collectively. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and look at how many of these legislatures, the people that are making the laws, that don't know a darn thing about what's occurring in the inner city of Waterloo, exactly. Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, Davenport. You know, they need to be educated. For sure. For sure. For this, for a lot of people's sake, as far as, as I'm concerned. But uh, I'm, I really want to watch this uh, energy deal because I think that um, parents are too... Um, too eager mm -hmm. on one hand and too passive on the other, which when those come together, someone's not going to be taken care of in the way that they should. And in this case, when you've got kids who can go in and buy and kids who always yeah. have their own money or whatever, uh, we could be seeing, I hope, not anything um, to a large degree or any degree at all, but I hope that that doesn't jump off. If it does, it'll probably be across the country, not right. just in any certain right. town or city. And, uh, and Chief, I've often wanted to ask, uh, there are people who, um, who would consider themselves um, money-wise, middle, middle class, yes. um, probably living a good life, like most of us, maybe not as much to the extent as we used to, but climbing back. Um, but I, I just don't think that we take the time or we're too busy to spend with our children to know what is going on. Um, yeah, you're right, Lou. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's got to change or we're going to just have this volleyball back and forth, back and forth, up and down, up and down. And parents are not making real changes at home and that's what it takes. And when you're into a change, you're bound to have, you know, the kids are, they're going to go for it, you know, and say, yeah, no, I won't do that. No, it's not going to be. It's not going to be like that. We're going to have to learn. Are there symptoms? What are the causes? What mm -hmm. are the, you know, what are the ingredients? Who can we bring to the table on this and that kind of thing? Or we will begin to get bad news. 
Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's sad how many kids we know out there that are only 14, 15 years old, even though they may live with a adult, yeah. that adult is having little influence or little interest exactly. in their life, and that's sad. Exactly. Um, wanted to ask you, too, about um, the public services. I know that people with these cuts and things, but we, we will not see that in this case. Is this true because we're doing this from people who are going to retire anyway? Yes, so, yes, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, so we won't see any sudden drop in, but for instance, if it used to take the police three minutes to go somewhere or to do whatever, it might not We'll still be long, there. We'll still be yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. You know, but we're to a critical point here. I mean, if uh, it's to a point where and I, a critical point because if we if we would lose three more bodies, we'd have to make some major adjustments. Uh, yeah. Like we would no longer respond to uh, property motor vehicle accidents involving property damage, unless it reaches a certain dollar value. Uh, we'd have to make some some significant adjustments like that. There are many cities that do that already, mm -hmm. so the citizens would have to self-report. Uh, what's sad is we uh, we'd miss a lot of suspended drivers. We'd miss a lot of people who are. They cause the accident because they're drunk or drugged, um, and that's that's a shame. But uh, we're to a point here where if we lose more bodies, that's you know, it will, it will be felt. Services will be impacted. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Uh, you know, we do all we can to uh, mitigate the violent crime <clears throat> and respond to violent crime. So if there's a shooting, and and we're typically there in in a minute, two minutes, we will still be there in a minute, two minutes. Okay. We are talking, of course, to Dan Jocko, Director of Safety Services, and uh, it has been, what year are you in? It'll be four years this weekend. This weekend, yep. so quickly. Did it go by quickly? It did. Four. It sure did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, four years. That's a major pinnacle. <laughs> I'll bet you. Um, I was going to ask you about, uh, what was I going to ask you about? Um, the stats, could we go back to that? Sure, Because sure. they sound so encouraging, you know, and it's not a by chance or whatever. No. Whatever made that happen. No. Nope. But now that we have those, boy, oh boy, if you could just hold on to them, keep them going, wouldn't that be something? Yes, we need the bottle. But, uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that that's going to happen, but at any rate, um, I think that when people find out that changes are coming, the first thing you do is start, you know, having a fit about, because we're thinking about what's going to happen to our world. Right, And right. we don't look at it, we, we have to stretch that further. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it can be done because the stats show that, yes. that it can be done. Well, and, and uh, I even, I'll, I'll, in my conversations with the officers, because um, I, I, uh, when we, when things are going good, you get to a point where it's the new normal, and you get comfortable with yeah. that. And yeah. uh, so, uh, you know, they're always looking for the new thing, or what's going to make them feel better, what's going to make us do our job better. I remind them, I said, let's look back on occasion. Let's look back uh, how the culture was in the past. And I, 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 it's a weird way to liken it, but I said, it's kind of like uh, when you take when you get into the shower, you take off your dirty undergarments and put them in the laundry mm -hmm. hamper, and then you take a shower. Mm -hmm. That's the new normal for you. You're clean. Mm -hmm. Think about putting those dirty undergarments back on. Yeah. You don't want to go back there. No. That's the old culture. That's, That's the old way of doing things. It, exactly. Um, you said something about uh, church roll. Did they actually have an officer who did what? Was assigned he was assigned specifically. Yes, yes. It was uh, Ward 10, we called it. Okay. Um, and uh, ten, uh, specific, uh, about seventy percent of the time, we were having a, we were, had the ability to have an officer patrol just Ward Ten. Now that's going to drop back to about thirty percent mm -hmm. because of the uh, adjustments we've had to make. Mm -hmm. We've made a lot of progress in church role. Uh, there's still a lot more we can do and we're going to do. But uh, since we made so much pros uh, so much pro uh, progress, mm -hmm. we felt okay. We can make this adjustment. Uh, move forward. The fact that they've taken some houses down over there and kind of cleaned up in that area. That too, helps. Certainly. That certainly yeah. helps, yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of eyesores. Oh, yeah, still. Uh, you know, I'm excited for Highway 63 through town here for I it to get there been, first. Yes. Because of the gridlock and everything, but, but to see how it's going to look. And, uh, 
you know, we still, uh, there's still some areas of the city, of course, I call them that we still have some areas of the city that uh, we have some challenges in. And, uh, but, but the thing is, there's only like three or four. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're growing smaller and smaller. Uh, what we need to get a handle on, and we're working so hard on it, we've talked about this before, is our gang activity. Because mm -hmm. uh, when we have a shooting in Waterloo, 90% of the time, that shooting is a result of gang activity. Okay. And it's one, one group is angry at another group, mm -hmm. so they'll drive by the other group's house and shoot up Dan's house. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and the sad thing is, even though they're shooting up that car, they're shooting up that house, eventually, uh, bullets don't discriminate. That's eventually, right. one of those bullets are going to hit a, a, a two-year-old child or grandma sitting on a front porch. I mean, we need to get a better handle on that. We've been working hard to do that. Uh, tell me, I don't remember just that quickly, were there ages involved in those stats? Did they break that down to say it's from this age to this age? Where we didn't break them down that specifically, but uh, uh, the juvenile stats, anybody who was 17 and younger, arrests okay. are down 49%. Okay. Uh, so the shoplifting, vandalism, disorderly conduct, and curfew violations, those are simply uh, crimes that are typically associated with juvenile behavior. And when it comes to uh, children not being where they're supposed to be and, and that sort of thing, um, it's been a while, but there was a real push maybe about five years ago or something like that about where to put kids in the meantime. Yes. And, and to have the parents, how, how that changed, working with the parents and so forth. And then I don't know whether it, it went away or whether we still have those kind of problems. And if we did, where would the kids be taken? We do. We do. I mean, uh, the, uh, sadly, that takes money. So the resources for, let's say we pick up a 13-year-old a kid at midnight. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's difficult to find, a, uh, uh, if you can't find Anybody. a responsible adult, to find the appropriate government agency that can assist us in taking that child. We have DHS, of course, mm -hmm. but with the, uh, the, the resources becoming fewer and fewer, uh, what used to take 15 minutes in finding that resource may now take an hour. So a police officer can end up staying with that child, babysitting that child. Yeah. Um, I was just going to ask to time. what extent, you know, might might that person be involved with this child? You just can't. Somebody has to stay with them. Right. Take them somewhere or right. whatever. We do something with them. Yeah. yeah. They could end up in foster care. Yeah. Um, well, every every time we say anything about foster care, I think about <laughs> you and your family, and the, and the, and that care that you're providing, you and your wife are mm -hmm. providing for kids who would never probably have a chance otherwise. And uh, that's, that's, people have asked over time, um, what can we do to encourage more foster care and getting parents or single people? Mm -hmm. I don't, it used to be you couldn't, you couldn't have a child if you were single. You know, you couldn't keep a child. Right, yeah. right. But most of that has, has went away for one reason or another. But these kids who are in or out of the stats, either one, we can, with the shootings that we had, how many did we have last year? Children? I think about 60. About All year we had about 60. Yeah. And that was too many. Too many, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 60 too many. And too young. And the, the other thing I wanted to ask you about uh, today, would you give us your um, opinion on guns? It just seems like every time that you turn around, it's a gun incident. Right. And sometimes it's younger people, sometimes it's older people. Would you, if you had to choose between the two or your stats, who, who does the most fire? Younger people. With yeah. Guns. Younger, younger people. people. That's what I thought. Uh, you know, and, and first of all, I think everybody knows I'm generally pretty pro-gun, but I like to say I'm reasonable in my pro-gun position, mm -hmm. uh, because there are some people that simply shouldn't have guns. I mean, if you're 16 years old, you shouldn't be walking around with a, a pistol tucked in no, your belt. No, I just uh, can't believe that. If you have uh, articulable mental health problems, you shouldn't be right. even able to buy a, a weapon. Exactly. Uh, and I'm not talking about veterans with PTSD or anything like that. I'm talking about uh, paranoid schizophrenics, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. where, where, we can, where we can articulate that. Uh, because I've seen that happen in Iowa, where people who obviously are schizophrenic or have significant mental health issues, uh, they're allowed to get a gun because... And they're not getting the care, right. Right, yeah, and there's the other side of the coin. Uh, they're not, 
No, that's, and that's, I, I like to say, let's stop whispering. In my opinion, the state has dropped the ball on mental health care. Yeah. Uh, and, and they need to do a better job, provide better, more funding, and do, do something. Mm -hmm. Because so many people are falling through the cracks. The officers are ending up arresting people with mental health issues. Uh, and that, that, let's face it, some people need to be in jail. Yes. Society needs to be protected against some people. That's but, what we claim we want. Yeah. 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 But there are people that the officer, that, uh, they'll deal with this person with some mental health issues. Uh, and they will have broken the law. They, mm -hmm. They will have committed disorderly conduct or whatever. You know, the officers will try to find somebody to be responsible for that person, and there's absolutely nobody. 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 And sometimes the only other option is to simply take that person to jail because the officer can't sit with that person at their home yeah. or at the police right. station. You got to do something with them. Uh, uh, it's an ongoing. It's another one of those not going to be solved right. like tomorrow, but we need to raise the level of awareness uh, because a lot of these people should never be put in jail. They right. should have, uh, there should be other options, but if, if there isn't anywhere to take them, where does that lead you? You're rocking a hard place, as the old people used to say, you know? Right. Um, a lot of kids are lost because they have nowhere to go. Well, it would be nice if we had the ability, and I know it costs a lot of money, maybe, but treatment. Treatment yeah, centers, treatment facilities. Exactly, It'd be exactly. nice to have that as an option more frequently. We don't. Yeah. And I don't think it's a, it's not, it should be the responsibility of the municipalities or the counties. I think it should be the responsibility of the state to pick up that ball mm -hmm. and make it better in all of Iowa. Because other states are doing it and it's working good. It Why can't we done. do it here? Yeah. Well, it's been, we've been all over the map today and, and back. Uh, anything? that's going on or that you would, you have any project that you're working on in the next? Well, uh, you, you know, I like, I like to, when I see happenings in the community, there are people out there that I like to say they're, they're planting seeds. They're planting seeds uh, to make positive things happen. And uh, sometimes I like to clamp onto that garden or clamp onto that seed and do all I can, do all the police department can, the fire department can to nurture that seed. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now there's an effort uh, by one gentleman. To, he wants to get young men in the parks, or get men in the parks, uh, to inter on, on, especially on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, to interact with some of these, especially young men that are wandering aimlessly and may uh, fall into that vicious cycle of acquiring a weapon and recklessly shooting it up or doing whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, he wants some men to get together to have a positive influence on these young men uh, who, who may fall. I like to say, if we, if we see people falling in our community, we got to catch mm -hmm. them before they hit the ground. We've talked about that so many yes, times. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm getting involved in that. Many people are getting involved in that. Uh, and, and we want to make that happen. We want to start this summer. Uh, also, uh, there's another, uh, there's a, a church that is working to do, they want to do more to work with people when they're released from prison so that they can be successful in the community mm -hmm. and don't get sent back to prison. Right. And those are such honorable and encouraging things. And those are two areas right now. As a matter of fact, I've got a, uh, one meeting at noon uh, for the, uh, the, the prison uh, efforts. And then uh, within the next week or two, there should be another meeting about getting people into the parks. Yeah. And maybe we'll have sunshine by then. We hope. We, we hope. hope. April we showers bring May flowers. You know it. Well, it looks like that uh, things are moving along. We're looking for some good weather here. Um, I am really, are, are those stats available to anyone? Yes. So if someone wanted to have a copy of that, how would they go about it? Matter of fact, I'm going to leave a copy of this with you. But if anybody, okay. if anybody wants the information uh, that we talked about in regard to our stats, Simply email me. Okay. I can ship it off to them. My email address is trelka d at waterloopolice dot com, and uh, okay. send me an email. And because uh, I'm proud of what we accomplished, uh, you know that uh, some officials from the state says, "Come on, that's that can't. Those numbers can't be real." That kind of ticked me off. Yeah, yeah, I they're guess. real. They're so real. So somebody made them up. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's not good. So, but you know, that's that's. Typical of what we get here in Waterloo. Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, you know, we're, a lot of us are proud of this city. Yeah. And uh, you poke us in the chest, we're going to poke you back. Okay. <laughs> well, it's been, it's, it's been, as I said, a variety. And I hope uh, sincerely that people will tune in, continue to do, tune in to Drunkle's Way. Uh, there are a lot of questions, I'm sure, out there that people just don't pick up their telephone to, to do that. But we hope that they're listening. Yes. Um, Dan Drunkle, we want to say thank you for uh, your continued uh, report to the community, so to speak. Uh, you've been doing this ever since you've been here, which you said is going on four years. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay, time goes fast, doesn't it? Yes. We, uh, again, want to say thanks to those out there in, in Radio Land, and um, we invite you back for Travel's Way. So for signing off for Travel's Way. Travel's Way. I'll leave this with you when I pick up. Written on the back of this sheet.